somebody that would like to come and maybe they can't drive at night or maybe they have trouble, why don't you drive them? Why don't you go pick them up and say, hey, I'll, I'll bring them to church if you can't get there or some way. Go be that gap filler. Go bring somebody to church with you. Um, the revival is for the church and to get the church uh, revived and, and reminded about who you belong to and that God loves you and I, I, I've already talked to our speaker again. I said, man, I said, we've already got excitement in the church. Imagine what God would do if, people, if God's people were already awake when the revival got here. So I'm excited about it. So tell somebody we got some black and white copies back there of uh, the pamphlet. Uh, Miss Rhonda probably have some tonight or Wednesday night. Uh, if you like color or wanted to put up one somewhere. But the black and white ones are already back there if you want it. Uh, help yourself to that. And his name is Hunter Goslin. You got one in mountain names. In mountain names. <laughs> Appreciate that too. Uh, don't start any other house to see who the church at. We uh, started our playground equipment. It's not ready, so please do not turn the children loose yet. Uh, not this is an endangering anybody, but it's not just ready to play on. Hopefully, another half day somewhere this week, and we can hopefully get that finished up and get something down on the ground underneath us so when they fall, and they will fall. They'll have a soccer Praise the Lord first for the uh, sending us the uh, equipment and also for the gentlemen that were able and women and come out and be with us yesterday. Uh, if there's no other announcements at this time,
All right, this time we would uh, dismiss our children's church. If that's you, then you may be dismissed. John, have a seat. I've done told you you can't go back here. All right. I mean, if you have your Bibles, I hope you do. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter... Uh, chapter 5, 
Ephesians chapter 5. It's good to see each and every one of you all. If, uh, if you're visiting, you're uh, very welcome here. If not, then uh, we just love coming back together. And uh, I love that we're able to uh, still be in person and still uh, be able to worship. I've uh, been watching the news, not neglected that, but I'm, I'm definitely uh, glad that uh, God is still in control. Uh, and so, if you have your Bibles, I hope you do. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 14. Uh, verse 14. Um, I'm, why, why the, if you're wondering why in the world I haven't went back to 1 Peter, is because I'm, I'm wanting to uh, preach a few sermons before we get into revival. I don't know if you've noticed, they've all had the common thread and a common theme um, of getting us back excited about what the Lord is going to do and what He can do. Because I believe we serve a God that can still do miraculous things. Amen. I don't believe we serve a God that's asleep. I don't believe we, got, we serve a God who's just uh, kicked the rocking chair back and letting us take control. I believe He's still sovereign and He's still in control. And so I, I, I want to see God do wonderful things here at Shady Grove, and I believe he's already began. Uh, but as we get started this morning, if you can and you're able, uh, stand with me as we read Ephesians chapter 5, and we'll start in verse 14. He says, Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are are evil. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be back together. I'm excited to see your people gathering together. And so Father, help us as we dive into this subject of redeeming the time. And so Father, I pray that you allow any idle word fall to the ground. Lord, I pray you preach me as a dying man to dying folks for that is all I am or ever will be. And so Father, help us to realize that these things are true. And so Father, be with us, lead us, guide us, direct us in all that we do. And Father, we give you all the honor and the glory, and we give you thanks. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, I, I do want to back up a little bit in the, therefore, if you have heard me preach any long length of time, you know that whenever the Bible says therefore, then what? It's there for a reason. You need to read what was prior. So let's, let's just take a glimpse into what was prior. He says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodliness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. And then we fall into our passage, and we want to skip on down to verse 16 and think about this for just a moment. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. If today were your last day, would you do what you're doing or would you love more, give more, and forgive more? Lakato, Lakato said, my boys can't say his last name and now they've got me messing up on his last name. Max Lakato says this. He says, would you love more, give more, forgive more? Or would you continue living the way you're living? If today were your last day and somehow you knew that today was the last day, would you be happy about the way that you've carried out your day? And would you be happy about how you've used your time in this life? Uh, we, we've spoke many times about life being short and, and we know that to be very true. But here, I want you to see in verse 16, redeeming the time, redeeming is a verb. It means to buy, it denotes to buy out. It means to buy it all. Not just buy a little bit, but to buy it all. Redeem means to buy out. Or as some would maybe say in the Latin, carpe diem, seize the day, would be seize the purchase. Means to, you find it so important that you seize every bit that you can get. Now on the flip side, the time part, now we would usually like to think that that is the Greek word chronos, which is our time. Seconds, minutes, hours. That's what the preacher's... No, he's talking about 
moments in life. He's talking about moments. Redeem the moments in life. Not a clock, but the moments. And it's translated uh, a little bit more simply, opportunities. So if we were to simplify this, it would say, seize the opportunity. Seize the opportunity. Colossians 4, 5 is a parallel. He says, walk in wisdom toward those who are on the outside, redeeming the time or seizing the opportunity. Something I want to preach about for just a few moments today is are we redeeming our time or are we fleshing it out to nothing? First thing I want you to see is time is limited. I have uh, spoke on this before. I've done funerals on a wide range of different ages and I know that death is no respecter of a person. Death does not care whether you're young or old. Time is limited in this life. And so even in James 4.14 he says where so you do not know what will happen tomorrow for what is your life. It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Folks I want you to truly understand that life is short. Even those who are maybe at the maybe in the later stages in life would cry out to you and say life is short and Psalm 90, 90 12 says so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom now what's the main thing that you hear in every single all three of those verses wisdom be wise about the way we use our time be wise use wisdom where do we get wisdom from only from the Lord now I can open up a bunch of books and try to be as smart as I can be but true wisdom comes from the Lord and so uh, you got this little story here in Luke chapter 12 he says the uh, talking about the ground of a certain rich man was plentiful and he thought to himself saying he was he would he would tear down his barns and build up bigger barns Jesus was speaking with him and he said, I'll tear down my barns and build greater so that I may store all my goods and so that I may retire easy so that, as I think it says, uh, my goods laid up for many years so I can take ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. Then whose will those things which you treasure be provided? It kind of Hit you in the gut when you start thinking about... Now, this is not a passage against uh, speaking against retirement. I believe God gives us enough sense to be good stewards of our money. I know some folks may say, well, He just means give it. No, God means to you to use wisdom, but not to pour everything you have into these earthly things, into these earthly vessels, and know that everything we put into the kingdom of God will eternally be there. But everything we put into this worldly kingdom will one day pass away uh, I see that more often as the older I get as I drive through I went through our, our town not too long ago and I seen some of the dilapidated buildings and I remember when they were open and I remember when they were the place to be and now they're abandoned and closed and for sale and the little sign down there we buy ugly houses and stuff and I'm like there's an ugly house why don't you buy that one but we, we see that time has a way of wasting away these worldly things. So we don't, we don't put our stock in these worldly things. The second thing I want you to see is time that is gone is unrecoverable. Now some of you older folks may say amen there. Uh, I know that I caught myself the other day as I was studying for this message and uh, my, my boys come in and they wanted me to do a thousand and one things and this, that, and the other. And, and I almost sent them away. Before I started working on this sermon, I would have sent them away and said, boys, I've got to, got to work on this. But then I realized that that is a moment, an opportunity that I need to seize. Because those boys are not always going to be that little and, and coming up and asking me to do things. One day, they're going to be asking me for money. And I'm going to try to avoid them. <laughs> But one day, they're not going to be on my heels anymore. One day, they're not going to be on my feet and in my way. One day, they're going to grow up and, and be out of the house and I'm not going to have them waking me up or fighting or, or, or you know, being out in the, on the trampoline suplexing one another. They didn't really do that. I didn't see a thing. Uh, but, you know, I see it. You know, one day, I'm going to miss all those things. So why in the world would I not seize the moment 
to spend with them. And so time that is gone is unrecoverable. It is limited, and time that is gone is unrecoverable. One story that I want you to look at to see how unrecoverable time is, is the rich man in Lazarus. He wants someone to go back and tell his family that this place called hell is real, and he did not want them to come there. I mean, you think about just the idea behind that as the rich man opened up his eyes and he was in torment and he was in hell and he looked across the gulf and he saw Abraham and he saw this guy that he had neglected all of his life and then this poor man and he saw him over there in Abraham's bosom and he thought, wait! I have brothers back home. Go warn them of this place. They don't want to come here. See, the rich man's time was unrecoverable. If you remember how Abraham answered him, he said, he said, oh man, if they will not listen to Moses, if they will not listen to the prophets, if they will not listen to the preachers who are preaching and the prophets who are prophesying, somebody coming back from the dead is not going to convince them. What does that tell you? They were very hard-hearted. When it comes to a time that even someone coming back from the dead would not convince them to go from their ways. So he said, let them listen to the preachers, the prophets, and Moses. Let them hear the words that are coming out of their mouth. And if they do not go from there, they will not listen to anyone. The rich man saw Lazarus and realized his time was unrecoverable. God tells us in His Word, to therefore whether you eat or drink or whatever you do for all the glory of God. He says, whatever you do, whether you wake up and drink coffee, do it all for the glory of God. Whether you work at McDonald's or work at IBM, do it all for the glory of God. People may say, well, how do you do that? You do it all with Him in mind. You do it all with Him in mind. Jonathan Edwards says this very striking statement. He says, how can we expect to dwell with God forever if we so neglect and forsake Him here? How can we dwell with God forever and and forsake Him so greatly here? I want to talk just a few moments today about some things that maybe waste our time. And as John would say, this would maybe be a good time to watch your toes because I think maybe some of us, including myself, are guilty of these things. Let's talk about some time wasters that would cause us to not redeem the time and use wisdom. Number one is idle time. Proverbs 19.15 says, Laziness casts ones into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. This is not referring to rest. I believe God wants you to give your body rest. Don't think this is talking about rest. It's not talking about you need to constantly be busybody. He's talking about don't become an idle person. Don't become somebody who just wants to go over here and just think about all the things that they could have done, would have done, or should have done. Be the person that's also an action person. This is referring to idle times. Many times I've seen this so affect America, but even in video games. Men, I'm I'm not even talking about boys and children. I'm talking about men who were addicted to video games. I shared with y'all a few weeks ago about a pastor who was addicted to video games, who played video games that he would not even play in front of his children. That's a problem, man. (laughs) That is a problem whenever you, as a man of God, will not play a video game in front of your children. Now, I'm not against video games. I like playing Mario Kart. Can I get an amen? Amen. Y'all play, y'all play Mario Kart? Now, have you ever sat down and played 12 hours of Mario Kart? No. Nah. Not going to happen. Maybe my wife, but no, not, not going to happen here. <laughs> if y'all ever think you're good at Mario Kart, come on over. I got the champion. I got the champion. My children said amen. I, I've never seen. She gets into it. Alan, she went in there, and I mean, the boys was about to win, and she said, no. <clears throat> she won. She gets brutal about winning Mario Kart. But video games, TV. How many times we get so sucked into TV? How much of Hollywood is poured into our life versus how much of God is poured into our life? 
How much of, of CNN or Fox, how much of the news is poured into our life in, in, in relation to the Word of God? And social media, it's all fake and so is yours. You, yeah, your, your media account is fake too. You, I bet you went in there and put the best picture you could find, didn't you? I bet you just put the good stuff on there, don't you? That means it's fake. It's not the real you. You go through times and changes in your life. Social media is fake. It's not real. It's not real. I'm not preaching against... I'm telling you that it is fake. Stop spending so much time on it. Amen? It's not real. I got to see what's going on. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> I did not get an amen on that one, I think. Maybe... I got one. All right. <laughs> All right. Wasted, waste, time waster number two, wickedness. Therefore, he says in the, uh, chapter 5, verse 1, he says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Don't waste time in sin. Christian, at, at a day and time whenever we need Christians to stand up the most, we don't need to be wasting time in sin. We don't need to be wasting time in backbiting and fighting and fussing and, and quarreling and all this. We need to quit, drop it, get rid of it and go forward. We don't need to waste our time in sin. And the third time waster is don't build your time with worldly goods. Matthew 6 says, Therefore do not worry what you shall eat or drink. Don't build your time building worldly goods. I, 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 I get so so convicted sometimes when I start spending all this time doing things that I know one day will just pass away. But I, I do have to provide for my home. I'm not saying I'm not going to let them go live on the street, but little things. Like worrying about mowing the yard. Y'all ever worried about mowing the yard? I do. It gives me ulcers. I worry about it. But you know what? If I miss mowing the yard, there ain't a thing going to happen. Did y'all realize that? It'll grow, that's for sure. And you know what? After I cut it, you know what it's going to do? It's going to grow again. I had a pastor over here at Franklinville. He said, brother, he said, I'm going to tell you what. He said, that is the biggest thing in this world that, is, that has cost so many people so, many mo so much money. I said, what do you mean? He said, mowing the yard. I said, well, what? He said, you think about how much I paid for my mower, how much gas I put in it. And he said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'm going to put a fence up and put a cow in there, and that's it. He said, I'm done mowing. I said, your front yard? He said, yeah, my front yard. <laughs> okay. I said, but there's other things to having a cow in your front yard. You realize that? He said, I can deal with it. And I said, okay. <laughs> I'm going to just mow mine. <laughs> I ain't going to put a cow in there. But, uh, but things that cause us to, to, to focus in on the worldly things. Don't build our time with worldly goods. They're going to pass away. He ends with verse 34. He says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Consider this, and then we'll, we'll try to get closed early today. Consider this. You are accountable to God for your time. You will be held accountable for God, to God for your time. Matthew 12 says, But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give account for on the day of judgment. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. We'll be accountable to God. Is that going to kick you out of heaven? No, it's not going to kick you out of heaven. But realize we're going to be accountable to God for how we live our lives. For what we did with the gifts and talents that He gave us. What did we do? Did we squander them? Or did we use them? And so we'll be held accountable. How much time is already lost? Moments and opportunities gone. I know as I say this, the older I get, it seems like the faster time flies. When I was little, I could not wait for Christmas to get here. It seemed like it took two years for Christmas to get here and one week for school to start. And now it's like yesterday was January the 7th. Today is August. I have no idea. But it seems like the older we get, the more time flies. The more time goes by. How much opportunities are already lost? How much more is time valued by those 
who are near the end of their life. Time that they would have with their children. Time that they would have with their other folks. They wouldn't squander it on some of the things that maybe we squander it on. How much time, how much value does this time have on those who are already gone? I cannot help but to go back to this story in hell. He lifted up his eyes and begged Abraham to even just get Lazarus to dip his finger in a drip of water. Could you imagine being so thirsty that just a drop of water, just a drop of water. But the rich man had all of eternity to think about the time that he lost, the opportunities that he missed. And so with that, he has forever to remember that. You know, I've preached about that before, but I've never preached about it in the fact of the matter that that man to this day still remembers every time he heard the prophets. You think about eternity. Eternity don't just end whenever something's written about it. Eternity is forever and ever. I don't even think we can actually put a scope on it. We live to be 85 and we're tickled to death about it, but we, we, we realize that there's eternity to be had. This is not the end. If this was the end, then worldly goods would be all that we could attain. But this is not the end. We have two choices of how we live our lives, and that is for Christ or for not. There's no fence. I think Billy Graham or Franklin Graham, one of them said, there's no real fence because the one who actually owns the fence is Satan. Or you're against him. Let's look at how we can redeem the time. In Romans 13, he says, And I do this knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, and for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Do you realize that you, and I say this to my kids sometimes and it aggravates them, but you are now one day closer to your last day. You realize that? We are one day closer to being in the presence of God. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. I'm not going to try to sing that. How do we fix this? How do we, how do we go about our Christian lives? How do we apply this? Preacher, you've made me feel plumb subconscious. I, I just don't even know what to do anymore. I, I, I want to help you with that. Let's redeem the time. As a church, as an individual, as, as a Christian, let's begin to redeem the time. Seize the opportunities that God has given you. As he says, as he says to uh, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The days are evil. Number one, begin immediately. Now, I know that y'all may laugh at me, but I've been on a few diets. I've been on a few diets. Guess what day my diet starts on? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> Never Sunday. You never start on the Lord's Day. You eat on the Lord's Day. Start on Monday, don't you? And if you miss Monday, you just take that week off and start next Monday, right? But let's redeem the time. Let's begin immediately. Say, Lord, I want to seize every opportunity you give me. I want to seize every time that you have for me to, to share the gospel with somebody or to even help someone. I want to seize the opportunity. Begin immediately to share, live, and teach the gospel. Love God and people. Our, our, our whole point of this church is to love God and love people. And begin immediately to get right and get ready and get settled with the Lord. Second thing I want you to look at is take inventory of your time. What is taking your time? What has your attention? What has your attention most of the time? Is it this? Is it what's on this? They were smiling until I pulled my phone out. I'll put my phone back up. But how much time do you spend on My wife 
convicted my socks off. She, I don't know if y'all know this on the iPhone. I'm going to teach an iPhone class. If you flip back to, I don't know how she gets me there, but if you flip back to that one page, it will literally tell you how much time you've been on that phone. Now I'm trying to figure out how to turn that off. <laughs> but the one day that she had me look at it, what was it, three hours and 59 minutes? Four hours on the Bible app. I'm just kidding. Four hours on my phone. Looking up stuff. What's somebody doing? Watching YouTube videos. <laughs> what has your attention and time? A young theologian once said, show me what takes all your time and I'll show you your God. That one was hard for me to swallow. Show me what's taking most of your day and I'll show you your God. Redeem your youth. Some of y'all looking at me. Redeem your youth. Serve God now. Young people, listen to me. Serve God now. Some say, well, well, wait till wait. I, I, I got to wait till I get my college done. I got to wait till I get my car done. I got to wait till I got my, my, my three horses, my two cats, my five. I got to wait till I attain all this stuff and then I'll serve God. Serve God now while you're young. And it will become so much easier to serve Him as you go. Don't put off serving and living for God. Redeem the time while God is near. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. Two things I want you to take away from this. Your sin will eventually, eternally separate you from God if you choose not to submit to God. One day your sin will eternally separate you from God. The rich man, as much as he would love to have cried out and got a second chance, will have no second chance. The rich man will die and be in hell and burn for eternity and eternity and so on and on and on and on. And he will not get a second chance. But you, the ones who sit under me today and hear me, whether you're on uh, uh, Facebook or whether you're here in person, you have the opportunity to redeem the time and seize the opportunity to whether you need to get right with God, whether you need to get busy for God, or whether you need to get some things settled with God. You have the opportunity right here and right now to do so. I wish that I could get, stand up here and say, Alan, that there hasn't been Sundays where I've preached to people and preached their funerals the following Sunday. But I'm just going to be real with you. Time is limited. We're not promised tomorrow. We have today. What will you do? Will you redeem the time that God has given you? Or will you pour in and continue to chase the things of the world? Are you willing to redeem the time with our Lord and Savior? Later may never come, but death is certain. Death is certain. If today was my last day and tomorrow found me gone, how would life be different if unknown somehow, if the unknown was somehow known? Would I be a better person? Would I live a better life? How much would I feed my resentment, my envy, my bitterness and strife? How would I choose to live? And what would be my emphasis? Being a blessing or a burden full of service or selfishness? Where would God be in my life? What place would He occupy? If today was my last day and to, before tomorrow I would die. If today was my last day and second chances all were through and I stood before my judge for him if I had done what's right, if I had not done what's right. 
If I had chosen self and sin, if I had chosen eternal night. But there's a reason for apprehension. I can die with my head held high. If I die to self and live to Him, it won't matter when I die. If we live for Him, all that will matter is that we'll be present with Him. Life is too short to hold unforgiveness, hold any anger, or anything between brothers and sisters in Christ. Isn't it about time, church, we redeem the time? Seize the opportunity that He's given us. A church that is growing, a church that is going, and a church that is on fire, seize the opportunity to be a part of it. Don't just ride the pew. Jump in and get, get in there. Maybe today, God has impaled upon your heart that maybe you've never truly redeemed that relationship with Him. If that's you, you know that today can be the day that you're saved. Today can be your day of salvation. Today can be the day you redeem or seize the opportunity to belong to Christ. Today can be your day. What will you do with it? How will you seize it? Father God, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Father, help us to live each and every day as if it were our last so that we may bring honor and glory to Your name. Father, that we may make Your name known all around and that they may know how precious You are to us. Father, help us to make much of Your name. Help us as a church to move forward in giving all thanks and honor and glory to You. Father, I pray that if there be one here today that does not have a relationship with You, Father, that today can be the day that they come down and say, I want to follow the Lord. I want to give my heart and life and everything over to Him. For I know He cares for me. For He said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Lord, You sent Your only Son to die on a cross for us because our sins needed to be atoned for and Your Son was the only one that could. Father, I thank You. For each person here, Lord, I pray you just bless and be with us today, Lord. Lord, I pray that you convict each of us about how we spend our time. That we may seize the moments that you've given us in our lives. To spend with our family, our church, our loved ones, and sharing the gospel with those around us. Father, I thank you. Father, I love you. And I just ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen and amen.